Well, good evening, everybody. Hi, Angela. Hi, Sam. And Annie as well. How are you, everyone? Happy Friday. And Dominique as well. Hi there, guys. A couple of minutes late there. I was just faffing about with all this stuff, trying to get it ready. Hi, Bridget. Nice to see you all. I hope you've had a really good week. Hi, Danny. So, tonight we're going to be talking... Castle Arts Mixed Media Pencil Set. So those of you that were live with me last week will remember that we had a cheeky look at this at the end of last week's session. Tonight I'm going to go through it in a little bit more detail and use some of the products in Worlds of Wonder. Hi Julie! And Tina as well. Hi guys! Okie dokie. So this is the mixed media pencil set that you can get from Castle Arts. So it comes with various different products inside it, which I will flick you through real quick and then show you the booklet. Hi, Angela. So really nice carry case that it comes in. I've got all these little pads that come with it as well, which I'll show you and then I can get these out of the way. So when you get the pencil case set, hi Lee, it comes with various different bits and bobs. So you do get several pads of paper with this one. You get a watercolour sketch pad. So these are all A5 size. Hiya Hannah. Um, quite a nice paperweight on that one. Nice and thick for watercolour media. You also get this um, dot graph paper sketch pad. So if you like sketching like I do, it can be quite helpful to do your designs on paper like this. So this one's going to come in really, really useful. You also get a little black paper sketch pad. It's quite a low paper weight on this one, but quite good fun for messing around with sparkly pens if you enjoy them like I do. And the metallic pencils that come in this set. Now you have some pastel paper as well which is really good because you have some pastel based pencils at the back of this set. You also get a cartridge paper pad, which I don't appear to have got out of the cupboard. And they give you this tutorial series on a water dragon, how to actually create it. This is quite a big um, poster, so I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get all of this under the camera at once, but just to give you an idea, all of the Castle Arts products do come with a tutorial using the products that are within the kit. So if this is something that you're interested in working through, you get one of these every time you order with them. And you also get another one of these little booklets. Now, those of you that have been on with me the last couple of weeks will know how much I rate these little booklets for the bits of information that you get inside them. This one doesn't give you the colour theory that some of the other ones do, but it does give you lots of practical tips on using some of the different mediums that are inside this kit. So I will just show you a couple of the, the pages um, really quickly. Some of these things are tips that are sort of repeated in most of the booklets about holding pencils, shading, that kind of thing. There's all sorts of stuff in here how to use all of the different products that are in there. Really useful little booklets. So on to the good stuff. Now what you get in this set is three different kinds of pencils. So you get 30 of their water, classic watercolour pencils. I've pulled some of these out because they're the ones I'm going to be using. But you see so you get a decent selection of 30 watercolour pencils with a water brush as well. I won't be using this one tonight because I always use my Caran d'Ache ones, but it's got quite a nice um, synthetic sort of brush, really nice tip. So I probably will use this one at some point. I just won't be demonstrating it tonight. So it comes with that in the kit. And then the, this colour series here seems to be repeated in the classic pencils that you get, although they're not in the same order. So you get the same in the classics as you get in the watercolour pencils, so 30 of each. And what I really love about this set is you also get a selection of 30 of their metallic colours as well. 
Now these are obviously different colours to the ones that you have got in the classic range. They're all very different, but they all complement each other really, really nicely. So if you're looking and you're kind of undecided about which of the pencil sets that you're interested in, this one gives you a good selection of three different versions. Um, I'll go into sort of the prices of these things with you a little bit later on before we finish up. So another bonus of this is you get a really nice multimedia selection at the back here for other drawing and things. So you have a full selection of drawing pencils through from um, hard leads through to soft leads for any sketching that you might be doing. We have pastel pencils in a couple of different colours here, the most common ones, sepia, black, grey, white and red brown. You get charcoal pencils as well in soft, medium and hard. And then various other blending tools and things. So you have a dual tip rubber ended um, pastel blender. You have your paper blending stumps, a pencil extender. These are charcoal sticks and graphite sticks. You get willow charcoal sticks in here. I haven't used these since I was at school. But just to show you, so these are a natural charcoal product which I absolutely will not be demonstrating tonight or I will get this absolutely everywhere. So I'm just going to pop those back in the box. But that is something that I will be playing around with. You get some pastel um, stumps as well in different colours, a normal eraser, putty eraser. You have a couple of sharpeners in here which are very nicely snuggled up. So you get a dual, um, dual hole sharpener here. A single one in here as well your sandpaper um, you can use this to clean your blending stumps and you can even use this to sharpen the point of your pencil to a really really fine point and a sponge for your water brush and things so you do get a lot of product in here for your buck you get as well um, a woodless water soluble pencil this was the only item in this um, kit that actually arrived damaged it lives in this bit here. I don't think it was down to Castle. Um, DPD, when they delivered it to me, the box looked like a concertina. <laughs> so it's a miracle that more of the things in here weren't actually broken. It was just roughly handled by the delivery people. So Catherine has lovingly glued this back together for me, but I'm not putting it back in here because it's a little bit on the fragile side. So what I thought we'd do tonight is have a little look at some of these different products. I'm going to use mainly the pencils in Worlds of Wonder and then we'll talk about some of the different pricings for the set. So let me swizzle this round and out of the way. So some of you will recognise this page. I've been working on this anyway um, on the side with Castle products before. So I did a couple of these with um, Barbara Live a few weeks ago. And a couple of these I, I popped on and did live with you when I was doing a bit of testing around with the pastel tints. So this little one here is the pastel tint pencils. Yes, she is Helen, definitely. I was like, oh my, I was literally heartbroken that it was bust. So um, I think she was fed up with me pouting and uh, offered to mend it. <laughs> so I was quite heartbroken that it <laughs> was broken. Right, I'm just going to move my lovely pen pot out of the way because I need to get this book a little bit further up the screen than it is at the moment because I've decided I'm going to do this little one down the bottom here using some of these watercolour pencils. So a couple of different blues you get a good selection of all of the main sort of colour ranges in this set so what I've done is I've just grabbed um, three different blues um, going from sort of dark to light so I'm going to give these a little sharpen. I haven't used them yet. And then let's do a little bit of watercolour down here. And then we'll go on with some normal traditional pencils. So if you have any questions, do let me know. I am watching the screen. So at the moment, this multimedia set, pricing-wise, let me give you the gossip. So a lot of you know... Crikey, that one's um, made of steel, I think. That did not want to go through my sharpener. Whew, disaster averted. So those of you that have been on with me for the last few weeks know that I have got a 
code from Castle Arts that will give you 30% off your orders if you are in the UK, the USA or Germany and you order through their website online. The code for that is Suzanne30, which I'll put in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. And I will also pop it up on my stories this evening after we've finished. Now, some of you have already used it um, and will find it will only work once on your email address. If you have a friend, family member, or you have like a second email address, if you order under that, you can use it for a second time. That's just a little tip there. Hiya, Liz. Um, now, this multimedia pencil set at the moment is already on discount for £80.99. Now, with my 30% off code, you can get it for 56 69 So what I've looked at is I've priced up the classic range, the watercolour range and the metallic range. And if you were to buy all three of those, it would come in at just over 100 quid. So if you're a bit undecided with the kind sort of set of pencils that you'd like to try, this multimedia set might be for you. What's Angela saying? Are the metallic pencils worth having? I've only used them a little bit on that butterfly um, and I liked them. So I will use them a little bit more tonight. I was a bit on the fence myself over whether it was worth having these metallic pencils because as you know, I do tend to put my, my bling in my pictures with my favourite sparkly pens. However, when I used them last week on test, I did like how they blended in with ordinary pencils. So I would say budget allowing, there is room in my cupboard for the metallic set, if that makes sense. So I'm really sorry if that doesn't help and sort of makes you feel like you need to spend more money. <laughs> but I do quite like them. So this is just the um, watercolour pencils that I'm putting down at the moment. So I'm just using the cornflower blue, which is the darkest one in the sec um, selection of 30 pencils that they give you. You always say that, yeah, when I... And he's not sure about the metallics either. What I would say with the metallics, I mean, I've swatched these. Let me just unzoom this slightly if I can. There we go. So these are the 30 that you get with the set. Um, whether you can make this out under my lamp, because I've angled it so I can actually see what I'm doing tonight, which is helpful, is the majority of them do have some sparkle to them. So on that butterfly that I've just finished, I used this magnetic mauve and I mixed it in with another purple. And when you flick it around under the light, it really does give you a nice hint of colour. So although I probably wouldn't have gone for these, with them being in this set and I've tried them, I actually rather like them. So yeah, it's a bit difficult. You've got you've got them, have you, Annie? <laughs> Helen likes them, she thinks they're shiny. They are shiny, beautifully shiny. Right, I'm just gonna um, saturate a little bit more colour on here. It's because I'm trying to keep my eye on the uh, on the comments to answer your questions while I'm doing this. You know I can't always multitask, which does not bode well for the Sunday session when we're gonna be going over colour theory. Oh dear. It's growing on you. Yeah, I've I've had a few people actually pop me messages and say that they've um sort of fallen down the metallic pencil rabbit hole since um I used them last week. And like I say, I don't think it's a set I would have ordered for myself. However, with them being in this set and I've used them, there's definitely a place for them. I think they they're very firmly in the bracket of these ones, which are the pastel tint. Again, as a standalone pencil, I wouldn't do a whole image just in these pastel colours, but they do sit very nicely with any of your other pencils that you are using. They will mix with oil and with wax-based products. So again, there is a place for them in your pencil tin. Bridget says the gold set's wonderful. Yes, Bridget, I saw that you'd um, put that post in my group. Was it the gold and the pastel tint ones you bought, if I'm remembering correctly? I think that's what I remember seeing. So I'm just going to overlay these two blues. And then I'm going to add a little pop of the, the lightest blue sort of down the bottom here. I'm sure that was what you put up. I have to say, I do like the tin for the gold pencils. That's really beautiful artwork on the tin. Oh, it was. <laughs> yes. We're all turning into castle artists, aren't we? And um, these discount codes that we've got make it all the sweeter. 
So I thought what I'd do is um, show you how these watercolours interact nicely with the standard pencils as well. So I won't be using the gold this evening. This will just be the standard soft, soft touch ones. Oh my God, I think I've got someone else's teeth in tonight. Just for a change. <laughs> so I'm just going to use the sky blue. So for those of you just joining, we're in Castle Arts watercolour at the moment. So yeah, remember on Sunday, I've got a live stream planned over in on the uh, Facebook group, Johanna Basford, your pages. And we're going to be doing the um, the page in here that's got lots of fish and like buildings underneath it. But we're going to be looking a little bit at colour theory and how I make decisions for which colours I'm going to use. I was going to do everything live with you, but what I realised is that was massively too stressful so I have come up with my a, a sort of a selection of colour palettes but I'm going to talk you through how I got to them because I, th I think I would have been um, an absolute bumbling fool on Sunday if I hadn't have done that <laughs> it wouldn't have ended well I don't think <laughs> so it does this set does come with a water brush um, your teeth were on Johanna's new book yeah they may well be <laughs> that's funny so I'm not using the water brush that comes with this set because um, I always use my Caran d'Ache ones. So I'm just going to get this one to wake itself up. But yeah, I'm already um, looking forward to October and we're only into March because of this new book that's coming out. It looks like it will be absolutely delightful. So I'm just going to get this to uh, warm itself up. So I always test it on the back of my hand before I commit it to the book because what you find with these is they are they're either not quite there or slightly too keen and I want it to be nicely in between the two. <laughs> Hokey dokey. I just realised I've got charcoal all over my nail. That is not a good look. See what I mean about it getting it everywhere? That's exactly why I won't be demonstrating charcoal um on here. <laughs> Nightmare. So with these watercolour pencils, um, similar to what you've seen me do with the ink tents, I prefer to activate from light through to dark. So all I'm doing is starting from the bottom, little circles to blend these blues together. And then what we do is we just stretch the colour out very slightly at the side here. And that just feathers off the edge so that we haven't got um, big ugly stop start lines. So you'll never get as vibrant look with these as you would get with Derwent ink tents because they are completely different. But what you can still do is tweak them with ordinary pencils over the top and still get a really pleasing effect. Let's do the same under here. See what I mean about it? it's either too keen or not quite there. Come on brush, what are you doing? I know I was using you like three evenings this week, but seriously, there we go. So that flamingo um, picture that I did took me a couple of evenings this week and that was ink tents that I used on there. So this little brush hasn't really had much of a break. So we're just slightly too keen now with the amount of water. Normally you reach an understanding with this brush and it behaves itself, but I have ordered a new one. To be fair, I have had this a couple of years now, so it's getting to the point where it needs to be replaced so I'll just keep activating this watercolour up to the top and then I'm just going to extend that line over and it just thins it out slightly around the edges hi Katrin so into here as well and then just carry on activating moving up the page so simple sort of backgrounds um, like this, you can obviously do this on a much bigger scale as well. Skies and stuff, I do prefer to do them in um, watercolour or ink tents just because it it takes a lot of the faff out of it. So I'm just going to pull a bit of that pigment over to this side as well. So we'll have to let this um, little bit dry before we we carry on with the trees and things. So I'll move on to a different image in a little minute. Had a little wobble there, that's quite normal for me. Let's just keep activating that. Hiya, Shark Queen. 
who is Sandra H, which I've just hastily looked at my list for from last week. It's the good job I've got this list. It gets me out of such a lot of trouble with my um, poor ability to remember multiple profile names, etc. between the different social media platforms. Let me just do this wee bit under here. I nearly missed that. There we go. So I'm going to let that dry off a little bit and we will have another little look at that in a second. So let's see which one we're going to look at. Let's see if I can get away with doing this butterfly. So I'm going to have a little go, I think, with some of these metallics. So I'm just going to grab... Let's go for that as your your blue okay so what i've done is i've grabbed um this is one of the classic soft touch so you've just seen me using the ultramarine on the watercolors so this set like i said earlier on um it mirrors the colors so you have the same 30 color selection in the classic soft touch as they give you in the watercolor which is really helpful if you do things like i'm going to be doing with this bottom color which is go over the top again with ordinary pencil and what I'm going to do is use one of the metallic pencils in azure blue so they look the same black barrel with a colour top but the metallic ones they code them MT so you can uh, set them apart from the other ones in the set I'm just going to give these a little sharpen because again they haven't been used did I have a better work week oh Helen I did not <laughs> Unfortunately, I absolutely did not. It's been relentless, absolutely relentless. With Catherine's had a bad week as well. So I'm very, very glad that it's uh, that it's the weekend tomorrow. <laughs> Sense of humour leaks all round, but thank you very much for asking. <laughs> right, so I'm going to start with the classic soft touch pencil first. So the ultramarine colour because this um, azure blue is a few shades lighter. So we're gonna blend one into the other. Is anyone having sound problems with Sandra? Hopefully not. I'm just gonna turn this round on an angle so that I'm not putting my uh, hand in this wet paint at the bottom here. So I'm gonna start at the middle of this guy's wing. Yeah, I'm very, very happy that it's, um, that it's Friday tonight. <laughs> Definitely. I don't know. I'm sure it will be better next week. Absolutely has to be. So I'm going to do what I normally do when I'm doing a couple of colour blend here. I'm going to press a little bit harder towards the middle of the wing here and then just taper that off slightly. So just reduce the amount of pressure that I'm putting through the pencil. Hi Caroline. And then that gives me a nice surface just to blend this other blue into. So I'm going to coat most of this wing with a little bit of a hint of this ultramarine. So classic soft touch pencil, really nice and soft to use. They sit somewhere for me between a Prismacolor and a Polychromos in terms of how hard the uh, pencil is. Nicely pigmented so you can get some really nice colour blends going on with these ones and of course with this kit that I'm demonstrating you have the best of three worlds because you have three different kinds of pencils that you can use all at the same time. So I'm just going to taper that off there at the edge of the wing and of course we can always go in for another go if we're not too happy with how it looks. I tend to go in for more than more than one go anyway. So with the metallic pencil the azure blue it's nice and twinkly, very, very pretty. So what I'm going to do is add this in from just about where I started to reduce the pressure on the pencil. So from about the middle, I'm just going to go nice and steady and I'm going to put my glasses on so I can actually see what I'm doing. That's better. So right away, you can see the glitter and the shimmer coming through there. Morning from New Zealand. Morning, Angela set would be good for holidays and traveling it absolutely would i would suggest um if you bought the set for holiday purposes that you remove the charcoal um implements from the back because i think if they were to get bumped around they really would shatter quite badly 
um, especially those um, willow stick things. But yeah, absolutely, um, really, really good holiday set. But it comes with a water brush. You've got a selection of 30 of three different of their pencil ranges, all in a convenient carry case. You've got a pencil extender there. You've got sharpeners, erasers, um, you know, all of the, the bits and bobs that you would suddenly have to think, oh, I'm going away on holiday. I mustn't forget to pack my colouring equipment. This one would just be a remove the very ter sort of terribly breakable things out of it, grab it and go. So, yeah, definitely um, some, a set for, for holiday purposes. Absolutely. So I am just going to redarken over with that ultramarine again now that we've... Um, got a little layer of that as your blue now that actually looks pretty damn good actually so I'm just going to extend a bit of that blue push a little bit harder and then let's do a little bit of a flash under the lamp so this is one of the classic soft touch going into metallic which I think you can see I'm just going to stand up so I can see what you can see hi Elizabeth because I don't know whether I've quite got this lamp in exactly the right place. Sorry for the wobbling, I'm just trying to uh, adjust this. There we go. There we go, look. So you see all of that shimmer there? So that's an ordinary soft touch pencil with one of the metallic blues. So if we compare it, obviously, to the Pentel. So this is Pentel Sparkly Pen here, and these little dots along the waterline here. Now... Obviously, it doesn't give you the same sparkle as the gel pen does, but what a different subtle effect that you've got with that. And I think you would see that effect no matter what range of pencils you were using that with. So that is, is a winner for me. You could exchange those bits for snacks, yeah. <laughs> Take all the breakables out of the kit and fill all the holes up that are empty with, um, with snacking type things. <laughs> I like your thinking there. Oh dear, now you want the metallic set again, says Helen. Soz. <laughs> what can I say? So I'm just going to have a wee look at um, this these colours. So I think I might go for... I'm wondering if I've got a green that would go with this Pacific green. So I'm just going to have a look at the different colours that we've got. Um, give me a jade green or... Jade green light, possibly. Let's have a look. So if in doubt, if in doubt when you're in a situation like this, give it a little go on a, on a piece of paper. So I'm just grabbing out um, a couple of the, the greens because it's a 30 selection. And I'm not sure how they're going to sit. So what we do is we just give it a little bit of a dummy run on a piece of paper before we commit it into the book. So I'm just going to test out both of these colours. So again these are the classic soft touch ones and let's see how this sits with this jade green. Mm -mm. So I don't know whether this is going to be too Oh no, that does work. Yeah, I think that works. It just needs a sharpen, so that's that one. Okay. So I'm going to give this a little sharpen to get it going again. This is a set that I haven't fully swapped. So just give them a really nice sharpen so that they're ready to go. Or even the sharpenings that come off are sparkly. How pretty is that? <laughs> right, so again with the soft touch pencils, um, the jade green. So this is the classics. And then we've got Pacific green from the metallic. I'm just going to go on with the jade green first get my goggles back on so I can see what I'm doing and just tilt this slightly to the side again because this is still slightly damp back here. Which sharpener am I using? This is Helen. I'm using a Dahl 133 which is a really lovely sharpener that adjusts to accommodate 
even your chunkiest pencils like Derwent Inktense, Luminance, and you can put anything through it. It's really, really good. And it's at the moment, it's about 13 quid on Amazon. Really, really nice. So the um, sharpener is in my Amazon storefront. So if you want to check it out, the link is in my bio. Because I think you can get multiple colours. I think they've got like a black and white one, green and white one. And then I'm using a grey and black one, which one of my lovely followers gifted to me last year, actually. So I've been using it for ages and it's still... In fact, talk of the devil. Hi, Carol. I'm just telling people about the Darwin 133 that you sent me as a gift last year for my birthday. It's a year, over a year old now and it's still going strong. So I'm going to do exactly the same with this one. Put a light base coat down where we're going to introduce that metallic colour. So again, using um, the Pacific Green in the metallic this time. So around where I tapered off the pressure around here. So this has got almost got like a silvery tint to this one. I do like it, Carol. It was life alteringly good. I still have my Faber-Castell Trio, which I use when the pencils are too short to go into the Dial 133. But um, yeah, it comes everywhere with me. If I go on holiday or whatever, it gets packed. <laughs> In fact, let me just move him out of the way before I knock him over. It's the same with this one. I'm gonna layer this one over the bottom here. But yeah, what you do with the Dial 133 is periodically, if you're always doing sort of coloured pencils, you just put an ordinary graphite one through it now and again, and it just keeps the barrel from um, degrading. It's really, really good. See, look at that. That's all sparkly and lovely as well. Yum, yum. So yeah, I'm a little bit of a, of a convert. I actually thought there wasn't really a place for these metallics in my range, but I'm actually loving them. So is there a black metallic through this? There is, there's like, there's Mythos Black or Typhoon Grey. Let's smush both of them together and see what we get. Ooh, or Platinum actually. Hmm. I know, let's do that one and that one together. So these are both metallics. So Vesuvius Grey and Mythos Black. I'm gonna use the black one first and just see how this layers over with a little bit of the silver. So I'm gonna add the black to the middle of this little guy's body. And you don't have to press um, very hard with these either. They're just as soft as the normal colouring pencils, which is really nice. Some of the other brands, the metallics, I think Angela, was it Angela talking about the Derwent metallics? I find them very, very scratchy and hard to work with, but these are really quite soft. Let me just get Mr. Dahl on the go again. Because I just want a finer point on... Uh, on this one. So this is the Vesuvius Grey, which is quite a subtle sort of silvery grey. And I'm just going to use this around the outside and just blend over the black with it. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. That looks really, really nice. I, c I hope you guys can sort of see the twinkling as well as I can see it on here. I think what we'll do is we'll add some sparkly pen into that. So if I show you guys again, let me just stand up so I can see what I'm doing again. You have to get the light in the right place for this. So if I just rotate this around under the light, so that's the classic colouring pencil with metallic over the top. And of course the little body in the middle, of course, there's two metallics, one on top of the other. And that gives you a really nice shimmer just like the gel pens do as well really quite good that's the uh, chair creaking there we go so i'm gonna leave him and come back to him for a little minute let's carry on working on this one down here Ooh, sparkly and ooh and ah says angela i know I'm, in fact let me put some pen tell on this while we're um 
waiting for it to, to dry. And then that way we can finish it off, can't we? So, and I want that one. Ooh, what colour are we going to use on here, guys? So we've got blue metallic green. Let me see. I can never remember which is which without testing it out. So do I want that one or that one? But yeah, the watercolour's dried good, um, Dominique. Let me see. I think... Yeah, I want that one. That one! And okay. So. So my Pentel pens. Um, so this one is one of the, the classics. This is Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallics. This is where you say U and R everybody. So this one is green with metallic blue. So that's going to sit really nicely with both of these colours. So what we'll do is crack on and get this put on the outside edge of the wing here and then this can be drying while we're messing about with the um the watercolors are the gel pens from the multi-pack some of them are and some of them aren't um because i use so much of them i do run out so i tend to buy singles either from um clinton's in the uk um which tends to have them for a quid each which is an absolute bargain hi juma uh, or I um, get them from Amazon. You can buy, there's a seller on there that does uh, three of like the same colour. It's because there's certain ones I use more of. So yeah, I started with the set and it's kind of morphed into um, whatever, loads of, uh, loads of loose ones, <laughs> loads of duplicates. <laughs> Let's get that onto there. So that with those metallic pencils is just ridiculously beautiful I didn't have any in Clinton's oh no that is sacrilegious the one thing that they don't do is a, a black glitter which is a real shame so this is from Paper Chase and I'm going to be very upset when these ones run out because um, each time I've been in there isn't any who and ask is Annie <laughs> you guys are so well practiced so I'm just going to line the wing with this one so this has got a little bit of silver glitter running through it as well, which ties in really nicely with the little pop of glitter that we put on his body. So I'm going to do this little bit as well. And then I may leave the last little bits here that are white. I might leave them white. Oh, your Clintons doesn't have them either, Jeanette. I, th I don't know whether my local one has still got them. I haven't been in for a while because I think I pretty much cleared them out, actually. Um, <laughs> whoops. The last time I went in but yeah I think um once everybody heard that they they were doing them for a, a quid and then three for two I think just before Christmas everyone clean, clean and clear out of pens <laughs> so I'm gonna let this dry up so that's a mixture of the soft touch with the metallics over the top and a little bit of sparkly pen as well sales assistant looked at you like you're an alien when you asked well that's rude for starters isn't it i hope you um gave the sales assistant a, a scathing and severe look because i certainly would have done <laughs> right let me just find the um equivalent for these ones so i've got ultramarine out i want cornflower blue and sky blue let's have a little look so they're all out of order which is very frustrating cornflower blue I don't know why they're in such a crazy order so I'm just going to give these a little sharpen so when you do get them home first out of the set they're all absolutely flat as a pancake on the end here so we're only using them once they've been through the sharpener so I don't want to do this with it on the desk because it's going to be really loud Probably not much better with me lifting it off, but there we go. Missed the start, don't worry, didn't I? It was just lots and lots of chat. Loads of chat. So these are the equivalent colours from the watercolour. Now that's dried pretty decently, so I'm, all I'm going to do is use these to glaze over the top very slightly. They had Clinton's own, which were in the sale. Yeah, I'd have left at that point. 
I must have completely lost interest. But like, what, Clinton's own? No, no, no. We're here for Pento. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is use this to really, really gently glaze over the top. Now, I'm barely putting any pressure through the pencil here because I don't want to lose that lovely watercolour effect that we've got. I just want the colour to be very, very slightly smoother. So when I say to you that I'm barely putting any pressure through, if um, I was trying to shade properly, I'd be putting about this much pressure on. At the moment, the pressure I'm using is more like this. So we're literally just tickling over the page very, very lightly. So if you struggle with um, pressure on the pencil, um, I know a few of my regulars, we've had conversations about this. It can be down to how you hold the pencil. If you try and sort of tickle the page like this with the point down, you're going to be putting an awful lot of pressure through that pencil. If you change your pencil grip and hold it further towards the middle or the end of the pencil and have it on the side and then glaze with the edge of the pencil tip, you're not putting nearly as much pressure through. Hi, Fabienne. So I'm just literally tickling the edge of the paper with this one so we don't want to lose that lovely watercolour effect now we've gone to the effort of uh, of using them but I just want it to be a little bit smoother in places and of course if we go ahead and we um, put another layer down it can reactivate. Um, Paulo I'm using Castle Arts pencils and this is Castle Soft Touch Thanks, Dominique. I'm going to start um, keeping you um, always on my lives. You, you're kind of like my assistant. It's very much appreciated. Thanks, Artelia. Lots of clapping. So we just glaze this onto the page really, really, really gently. So I don't want to take away um, this nice watercolour look. So the next colour down that I used was the ultramarine. So again, we're mirroring the colours that I used in the watercolours. Ha ha, says Dominic. <laughs> I saw you with the code earlier on as well. She's like, Suzanne 30, Suzanne 30. I think you did that last week. It was like deja vu. <laughs> so again, I'm just going to glaze over what I've already put down. So I'm really barely touching the paper really with this. Just very, very gently. So if you've sort of wobbled around, made a few mistakes, um, got a bit of um, sort of watermarks in places that you're not very happy with, by doing this, you can just tweak everything really, really easily. I'm just adjusting my grip because this is such a small area. You can't be as loosey-goosey with how you hold the pencil when you've got titchy little areas like this to do. You better keep focused, definitely. I'll be like, right, give them a reminder of the sharpener that I'm using. <laughs> I wouldn't be that rotten to you, it's not nice. <laughs> so the lightest blue that I was using in the watercolour range is the sky blue. So again, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. Ah, hi Dewdrop. Clinton's in Liverpool, one had them but the local one didn't. Oh, outrageous. We need to be um, making a campaign to um, Clinton's and saying, excuse me, you can't start stocking these pens for a quid and have the colouring community feeling wildly excited and then suddenly not have them. Ah, well done, Carol. I do think that's possibly cheating though because um, you bought it for me. <laughs> Just saying. And well done, Dominique. Gold star and cellar tape on its way. Right, so I'm just gonna do exactly the same with this one. Just glaze over those colours. There we go. So I think I might have like We'll see, I don't know what colour um, temp pegs I might have. Have a little look at a tree first. So glasses back off because everything's all over the place now, including these pencils, which are starting to uh, roll down the desk and attack me. So what, um, let me see, I'm thinking purple, purpley colour, because then I could possibly use that nice, where's it gone? No, put it back in upside down. That's the one. Magnetic move. So what purple have I got that will go with that in the classic range? I'm thinking possibly this one. Yeah, that will be all right. You got the dull 3-3 on my advice, did you, Ju? <laughs> I think I'd had loads of people um, 
say to me about it and then I'd done absolutely nothing about it and then Carol said I'd really like to get you one for your birthday I haven't looked back it's obviously been um depriving myself <laughs> so this again is out of the soft touch so all of these colors I'm grabbing are from this same set so we're doing quite a lot of diverse things with this all for sort of one one price really and again another magnetic one so magnetic mauve so purple and blue are a really sort of safe combination to use really they're not going to clash or anything so I'm going to use this for the little curtains for this tent here so I'm going to do the same as I did with the butterfly and um, push a little bit harder towards the edge and then just ease off slightly and that'll be where we'll introduce the magnetic mauve as well so what I might do is taper this off because this is bunched together sort of towards the middle here. So I'm going to taper this one off at more of an angle. And then the same with this side. I actually really like this purple colour. It's quite similar to the Process Red, which I use a lot of in Prisma. Almost identical, really, really nice um, shade. Let's do the same under here. So I'm just going to taper this off um, a little bit more at an angle. So give most of this a little dusting of this colour. And then we'll go on with the, the magnetic colour. So this is the magnetic mauve that I used on that butterfly. So there was only one area on that butterfly I've just finished that had these metallic pencils. And that was the bit that I did live with you lovely folks last week. So I'm going to do the same again on here so I'm just gonna smush these two together shows off the, yeah it definitely does Dominique and we'll talk a lot more about these color choices and why I grab the ones that I grab on Sunday when I do the live over on Facebook I really hope I can uh, string a coherent sentence together between now and then it's gonna be a bit awkward if not <laughs> oh. make sure I'm caffeinated that is the key make sure I'm caffeinated so I'm going to do the same with this one. So all of these metallic colours, they're all nice and soft. They're not scratchy at all like the Derwent ones are. And I have used the Derwent and ended up getting rid of them because I, they were just too sort of dense and, um, and scratchy for me. So I'm just going to grab that purple again. Just sharpen up the edges. And that is sitting really, really nicely together. Now I'm wondering if I can do it with the greens. So let me see. So it all depends on whether any of these greens go together with the ones that I have got in here. So let me see. Mm, I haven't really got any earthy greens, which isn't massively helpful. Right, hooker's green. So just bear with me while I'm looking at my colour chart a second. That one's kind of an earthy colour, but it's dark. Let's see how we get on with hooker's green. And... Ooh. Let's try this olive birdie. Always find the redram in the coffee always helps as well. <laughs> oh god, that would be a whole other kind of experience if I was having um, alcoholic coffee <laughs> before a live stream. I do not, um, I do not do well with uh, with alcoholic drinks. I'm an absolute lightweight. <laughs> US moves to daylight savings on Sunday. Um, no, we don't until I think it's the 27th. I want to say it's the 27th of March for us. Stop laughing, Helen. I see you. <laughs> I'm absolutely hopeless. I'm a really cheap date. A half a glass of wine and I'm gone. It's awful. Really, really quite bad. So I'm going to go in with this hooker's green colour because this is quite an earthy sort of a yellowy green and then we'll just see how it looks with a little bit of this metallic olive verdi over the top which is another earthy green but it's really quite light so let's have a little go um what I might do is this little tree with it Mother's Day so we lose an hour oh we do because they go forward don't they oh damn it Lose an hour in bed. Right, put your glasses on, Suzanne. I can't see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm mostly going to do the bulk of this with this hooker's green. And then I'm just going to tick all the edges with that metallic one. 
because I'm not convinced that these are the best colour combination that I've ever tried in my life, but I'm trying to just restrict it to using the products that are actually in this kit rather than um, pike out and go and get my other ones from the other side of the room. So let's just see how it looks. So what I'm doing is exactly the same thing, I'm just pushing harder towards the top and just tapering off on the pressure at the bottom. But I think Mother's Day um, this year, I don't know what the other guys in the UK um, think, but I think it's quite late. It's normally a lot sooner, isn't it? Angela, winter's coming in New Zealand. Oh dear, that's what we're just coming out of at the moment. Although where I live in the UK, um, in my bit of the country, we've actually got away rather lightly with the winter. It's been chilly, but we haven't had any sort of snow or anything too grim, apart from the storms we had the other week. Um, but yeah, we've we've got away with it pretty much, actually. It's been not too bad. But yeah, Mother's Day is really late this year. I keep having to look at the calendar in case I've forgotten, because um, that's, yeah, I won't want to forget. Okay, so let's see what this looks like by adding a little bit of this onto the bottom. So you'll notice I didn't get my little pad and try this first, so we're just uh, winging it here. Oh, actually, that's not so bad. That's a blowing relief, isn't it? I come on to uh, on live to demonstrate these things and then um, show you how to absolutely demolish a picture with it. <laughs> it's your birthday on Mother's Day, Sam. Oh, lovely. Oh, double the presents for you then if you've got kids. Excellent. That is a cheeky result. You see how my mind goes there? Although, didn't you already have an early birthday present from your husband that was pencils? I don't know if I'm remembering that rightly and wasn't that partly my fault. <laughs> I think it was. So I'm just going to glaze this over the bottom here. So that's just given that a really nice um, little pop of lighter colour. So what I might do is just re-go over now the darker edges under here where we would have a bit of shadow. Because it's, it's so small, I don't want to mess about adding sort of bits of black and things under this. There's there's no, no point messing about with it to that extent. And then what I think we'll do is, what other colours... Suzanne go go down I'm sure she doesn't know. Is he listening, Sam? You need to put something else on the telly or something so he, he can't hear. <laughs> All right, let me see what other greens I've got in this in this kit here. All of three, four. Mm. Prussian green. Hang on a second. Let me just look at my sheet again. Yeah, that works. Okay, there's only a couple of options um, in the kit that we've got. So I've just grabbed the Prussian green, which is a couple of shades lighter than this hooker screen. He's in the shower. So that's all right then. Remind us what he bought you that he doesn't know about. Because I can't remember what you said. <laughs> just remind me. So funny. Oh dear. But I've got absolutely nothing to talk about because I had new paint pens arrive was it yesterday. No, I'd gone work, hadn't I? Wednesday. <laughs> so I'm going to go on with the um, hooker's green again. So this is the darkest one and I'm just going to taper this off at an angle. So I'm going to bring bring the green down um, sort of most of the tree, almost like a third of it. The castle gold. Oh, did, you, did he buy you the tin or the pencil case? I can't remember. I hope he went for the pencil case. <laughs> Oh dear, I don't know. What you what you could do is, if he doesn't know, is you could say that you've seen this multimedia set with me tonight and make a suggestion because it's your birthday and then that might be a <laughs> pretty bonus. <laughs> right, let's have a look at what's Helen saying. So if I could only buy one, would it be the original set or the gold? Oh God, um, oh, that's difficult. That's really difficult. If I absolutely had to choose, I would probably buy the gold if you're forcing me to make a choice. If I had the option and budget allowing, I would probably have both. Um, just purely because I like the variety and they both do slightly different things. Um, I have to say out of all of the ones that I've tried though, um, I see it's difficult because... Oh God, I'm in a quandary if you could see my face right now. Um, so I like the golds very, very much. Um, very nicely blendable, sit nicely with the other pencils that I've got. 
I also like the pastel tint ones because they integrate, but I adore the watercolour set um, better than Arteza ones, um, better than some of the Faber-Castell ones that I've tried. So it's really, really difficult. I do feel um, that with these new ranges that they've done, they've really upped their game with their products because um, it's just so versatile and it all works really, really well together. Really nice products, decent price, usually got um, savings to be made on them as well. So, yeah, it's a difficult one. Um, but I really do adore the gold pencils. I really, really do. So if I had to choose, it would be them. They smell better. <laughs> Which is ridiculous, I know, but they, they do. They smell better. I like the smell of them. You have to huff your pencils when you get them. You have to. It's compulsory. <laughs> <laughs> Only you guys would understand that statement. <laughs> so hooker's green going on again. So I'm just going to sharpen up the darkest areas now that I've got all three down. But yeah, what a difficult question. Um, yeah, very difficult question. You know, it's 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 easy for me because I'm I'm very very lucky. Some of the castle sets I've got have you know have been gifted. My my hundred and twenty set of um, these classics my mum gave me. Um, and, you know, she wasn't using them, so she gave them to me. The watercolour ones I bought for myself. Um, and what, I got the golds gifted. I got this set gifted. The pastel tint were gifted to me by Carol. Thank you very much. I absolutely love them. So, um, you know, I've I've been in the lucky position where I've actually been sent some of this stuff for testing and things. So, but, you know, budget allowing, it's... You know, if I was choosing all these myself, would I have bought the gold for myself? Probably not, no. I, I wouldn't have done. But then, uh, you know, I only know how good they are because I've tried them for myself. So it's, yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? It's a whole other conversation. Oh, hello, happy colour girl and all kinds of rainbows. Welcome. Good morning, says happy colour girl. Where are you watching from? It's the evening here. What countries have we got in the house tonight? I always love seeing where you guys are watching from. I know we've got New Zealand and the States and the UK. Where else have we got? So a bit of Prussian green again. It's so just going to overblend this one. And then again, I'm going to add that little pop. Oh, New Zealand. So it's the morning over there. Oh, we've got Belgium as well. Wonderful. Oh, thanks, Jeanette. Yeah, when they um they sent me the message to um to say would would I like to receive a set to test, I was like, oh yes, please. And um, I've got a contact now at Castle Arts as well. Oh, we've got Canada as well, Helen, and Colorado. Wonderful. Yeah, I've actually got a contact with um, Castle Arts now, who I speak to quite regularly, and um, their marketing managers just joined my Facebook group. Um, I'm not going to tell you who she is because um, that would be a bit unfair, but she's very recently joined my Facebook group. So that's really nice to have them um, on board. Really, really nice. Oh, Tracy's in Vancouver. Oh, we've got Australia as well. Oh, my goodness. New Zealand. Wow, Angela, it's Saturday where you're watching. That's bizarre, isn't it? Friday night for me, Saturday morning for you. Oh, Vancouver. Oh makes me feel wistful. God, I love Vancouver so much. We will definitely, definitely be returning to Vancouver again at some point. Um, one of the best places that we've been to. I absolutely adore it. Stanley Park and, oh, how fantastic. Brooklyn, New York. Oh, New York is on my list to return to as soon as possible as well. Love it there. Yeah, I love Vancouver as well, Helen. We did so much. We went up Grouse Mountain. I pretty much had to lie on the floor of the uh, cable car. That was horrendous. <laughs> I can't do heights. Um, but, oh, we had a lovely time. Lovely, lovely time. There we go. Right. So these little trunks down here. Uh, what we got in the browns. Um, so I only got two browns in here. You can see Stanley Park from your apartment. Oh, Tracy, you lucky devil. You have to send me a picture. I'd love to see a picture. Oh, haven't I? See, I'm thinking about Vancouver and I've lost the plot now. Right, burnt umber. Oh, 
Stanley Park. So I actually, we went and saw the totem poles and we saw bald eagles in the wild, like proper real ones. That was amazing. Oh, we saw bears at the top of Grouse Mountain. What's that island called that we went to? Oh, oh flipper neck. Brain fog. It's just, oh, it's really nearby. Marit's Colourful Adventures. Hi, welcome. Better watch the game. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks for joining. So I've just got CPS. We've only got two browns in here. Yeah, definitely, Tracy. That would be lovely. I'd really appreciate um, that very much so. Oh, how wonderful. I might actually do these poles in this as well. I think I'll use the lighter colour. So I'm just going to run run that brown pencil down. I was thinking about doing them in um, sparkly pen, but... I'm not convinced that there's an awful lot of point. Bowen Island? No. It's the one It's the one where you can get... Um, oh, God. I'm trying to think which side it was on. I'll have to, um, I'll have to try and think. Oh, flipping heck. Can't even look on my phone because I'm, I'm using my phone. But you've got like a little, a little boat to it and there was loads of places that you could eat in a really, really good art store, which... Um, I came out with um, a fistful of stuff from, <laughs> as you do. That's the one, Angela, Granville Island. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the one. So this is still with those same couple of browns. I'm just using that darker one sort of inside the tent here. Love this page. Thank you. This is all Castle products apart from the sparkly pens on here. So I'm aiming to sort of finish it off in uh, in these products. So let's get some light going in there. I'm just going to pop these browns back in the pencil case because this uh, desk is, is looking quite ridiculous. Yeah, Granville Island. That's the one. Right, let me have a sip of my juice real quick. Babe, there's a lady on here watching from Vancouver. There's a lady on here watching from Vancouver. Oh, hello. Mm. <laughs> it's Catherine. She's doing a model on the other side of the room, but she's got um, headphones on, so she can't hear what we're doing. <laughs> Bless her. Right, so yellows in the pack. We've only really got a couple to choose from. So lemon yellow and lemon yellow light. So I'm just going to use the lemon yellow one. Let's give this a wee bit of a sharpen first because they've got those flat points on them. Let's just do this one as well. Star 133 is going, please put me away. Oh my God, there's bits everywhere. All right. Desk hoover out we come. So I don't know if any of you have got these. A little Tihu desk hoover. It's brilliant. There we go. It's better. Lemon bits everywhere. Right, so lemon yellow. It was about eight quid off Amazon. And all the pencil residue and stuff that goes absolutely everywhere. And you just whiz that over the desk and it just gets rid of it all. It's so, so good. Oh, so where else have we got? We've got the States, Canada, Belgium, New Zealand, UK. Where else have we got watching this evening? So I'm actually going to add a little bit of that lighter one just over the top of this brown just to warm it through slightly. It just gives the, um, the effect of it being light inside as well. There's no harm adding this over, it doesn't do anything, it just lightens everything over. I'm just gonna Australia, that was it, Marit. I knew there was somewhere else. And then I'm gonna use the same yellows just for the moon. So just alternating the lemon yellow, the darker one for the light lemon yellow. And in fact, I think we have got, oh, I think we've got um, Brazil here as well. Hi, Celeste. So I'm just looking for an orange. Um, oh, there we go. Although that one might be a bit too, di a bit too dark. So um, cadmium yellow deep. Do I ever clean it? 
I do. Um, I usually run graphite pencils through and then it all gets sort of brushed out and everything. You never get to cut. No, I was thinking, um, Marit, I've never seen you on one of my lives before, so it's good to have you. Welcome. So I'm just going to use that just to darken over one of the edges there, just very slightly. And in fact, I might give just a little pop of this at the top of the tent as well. Yeah, that's better. Let's see if that sits over the top of this brown. Yeah, it does. Right, we want a little bit of... Um, little bit of grass and etc down here so I think I'm going to go with that darkest green again the hookers green so I'm just going to swizzle that round slightly and then we're just going to do some linear shading to start with because I'm not going to be taking this all the way down the page it's just to um, anchor this down because at the moment we've got trees and a tent completely in midair which is not the best look in the world just past six in the morning, she'd so usually be fast asleep. I don't know, you see, if it was an option between slumbering and listening to me, Mary, I'd probably still be in bed asleep, if I'm being honest. So uh, I feel very thankful that you've woken up to listen to me this evening. So nice and gentle shading again here. Remember, these pencils are nice and soft. A little bit goes a long way. So just going to anchor this down. So I'm going to get a lighter colour um, just to go over that which will be the Prussian green again that I was using before. So we're just recycling again colours that we've already used in the image. And I do this an awful lot um, because I feel that it ties things together really, really nicely. New to Instagram. Oh, welcome, Be Co. Oh, no, Be Cozy Colouring. Be Cozy Colouring. Oh, I'm very glad that you enjoy the videos. And if it helps you, then that's really good. It means that what I'm doing is is worth it for people. So thanks for the feedback, that's really kind. So I'm just gonna press even lighter now because I just want to fade the edge of this like we did do at the top with the watercolor section. So nice and gently. And then I'm gonna be an absolute devil and I'm gonna pop a bit of this metallic green on again. So the same three greens that we used on the tree. And I'm just gonna run a little bit of this metallic colour through the very bottom of the picture just to give us a little layer of blink here. Actually sits really nicely over the top. Hmm. There we go. And then let's see, what do we got? Uh, Davies grey, black. Black might be a little bit too dark, but let's see. So remember, these are all the same colours out of this kit. So I will show you this kit again before we finish up for the evening. So this is just the ivory black colour again out of the Castle Art Soft Touch. And just under these trees, we're just going to have the smallest little hint of a shadow under here. And again, just around the bottom of these curtains. It just anchors everything down. And then I'm going to take my hookers green again, which is my dark green. And just where we've got the little hints of these bits of grass coming up. And just add a couple of little bits at the side here. And then what we'll do is we'll um, pop a little sparkly bit on here and do the stars. And then that will be that little one finished. A proper international colouring group. I know it actually really is, isn't it? It's very, very cool. It never gets old, ever. Um, no, nope, not that one. And that one. Um, that one. Right, I want a white gel pen that's not going to behave like a plank. Let's try that one. We have to hope for the best with these white gel pens. Those of you that are on my lives on a regular basis know that I have a heap of misery with these white gel pens when I go live. Oh, that's the wrong pink. Uh, bear with, guys. There we go. So, uh, Pentel Jewel Metallic in pink. So I'm just going to use this one to pop 
a little bit of bling on the tie backs. So pretty. And then, like a blank, haven't heard that for ages. Well, th there is a, an alternative word that I very nearly used, which is completely inappropriate for uh, for live being live on air. So I'm quite glad that it was just blank that popped out of my mouth. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. This one uh, was working quite well last night when I was doing the flamingos. So I've um, given it one of my severest looks and it seems to be working well tonight as well. So that's a good thing. I don't know what it is with these these pens. I seem to have the kiss of death on them. I really do. So I'm just going to add some random little dots. We've got bits and bobs of stars. Helen's laughing again. White gel pens and I don't get along well. No, I tell you what I wasn't getting along with well with last night either was um, one of my acrylic paint pens in white. It took me about 10 minutes to get the thing going. Um, and then when it did get going, it very nearly blobbed all over what I was doing, which I wasn't massively impressed <laughs> with. Um, but I got it sorted in the end and I've got those new ones that have arrived, which I think will be a bit more reliable. I think, I think we maybe need maybe a little bit of the old bit of bling on these trees. Let me see what I've got in my pot. Um, let's see. No, it's got red and blue in it. Maybe that one. I've got room on the desk, so I have to keep bending over to get the pot off the floor. So sorry for all the um, shaking about. So this is a yellow and metallic green. Bling up the trees, says Dominique absolutely will do. I'm not going to go too mad because I don't want to lose the nice metallic that we've got from the pencils but I just want there to be a little bit of sparkle on there so I'm just going to very randomly just add, might do is use this on like the dark edge of these ones. So you don't a little bit of this goes a long way you don't have to press um massively hard with these pens and this was one of the ones um that i ordered there's a seller on amazon that i've been using and you can get just like three of the same color without having to buy the whole set really really good they can do a lot of damage <laughs> yes is that the acrylic uh, paint pens we're talking about they absolutely can so this desk is an absolute train wreck of a catastrophe of pens everywhere. <laughs> Just get some of this stuff out of the way. Put them back in the pen pot. So I'm not going to finish um, this one off tonight because this one's still wet and um, we're in an hour, like an hour and 15 and I don't want to uh, the algorithms to get fed up of listening to me. So let me just show you again under the light. In fact, I shall stand up to do this bit because I can see better with the lamp. So you have got soft touch, classic pencils, metallic and metallic gel pens on this butterfly. So really, really nice and shimmery. And on this one, you've got watercolour, classics, metallic pencils on the trees and the tent and sparkly pen as well. So all of this is castle and I mean, I haven't finished this one yet, but you've got one down here that's just the pastel tint pencils all used together. That one's got some of the pastel tint in it as well. I think this one was just the classic soft touch ones, I think. That one is just the classic soft touch and this one was the um, mostly the pastel tint ones. So all of this page will be done like this. So I maybe do another one of these with you guys next week, depending on what we're doing. So I'll just show you that product again that we've been using this evening. Because I know some of you sort of joined a bit later. So um, this is half empty because it's now all over the desk, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> so this is the Castle Arts mixed media pencil set that I've been using. So thank you, Dominique, there's the code. So those of you um, that haven't already used the code, there is a 30% off discount code, which Dominique's just put. If you're watching this back on YouTube, I will put it in the description below. And obviously when I share this video in a little while on Instagram, I'll put all the details in the body of the text 
and on my Instagram stories and on my Facebook group. So if you've already used my discount code, um, what I would say is if you've got a partner who has a different email address or you have a dummy email address that you can use, you can use it multiple times. That's just a bit of a, a bit of a cheat uh, tip for you there. <laughs> so what do you get for your money? Um, so at the moment, this set is on offer for £80.99. With my discount code, you can get it for 56 69 because you get an additional 30% off. So for your money, you're getting 30 of the Castle Arts watercolour pencils. You get a water brush. You get exactly the same colours as the watercolour ones. Let me just unzoom. Suzanne, what are you doing? Lousy. Let me show you again. I was zoomed in. So 30 of the watercolour pencils, the same colours you get in the classic soft touch as well, which are currently all over the desk. So while I think about it, let's note that's metallic. Let's stick a few of these away because it's like a pencil apocalypse. And they really need to be in a better order than this as well. There we go, that's thinned the pile out slightly. You also get 30 of their metallic pencils as well within this set. So the two sets of metallic that they've got on offer at the moment, I think the pencil case is a set of 50 and the tin is a set of, I think it's 48 colours. So you actually get 30 of them in this set. And as well as this, you get a plethora of other drawing equipment. So like Dominique pointed out earlier on, if you're somebody who likes to take your colouring kit away with you when you go on holiday, this is a really good grab bag because as well as your three pencil ranges, you have your sketching pencils. There are five pastel pencils here as well. You've got charcoal pencils in white and black. You have a dual tip blender, your blending stumps. You have a pencil extender here in case the ones you're using are getting you know, used up. Graphite sticks, pastel sticks, you've got putty eraser, a regular eraser, two sharpeners are hiding under here. That one's a dual hole one, that one's just a single. And you have your sandpaper block. And this is a really good bit of kit. If you have a fine bit of detail that you need to do on an image, you can actually use this to sharpen the tip of your pencil with and you get a much finer tip on the end. Pencil apocalypse. That's literally what this desk is right now. So when I was pricing everything up online for you before I actually came on to show you this stuff, let me show you what, ignore my writing. So at the moment on discount, the 120 set of classics, the zip case or the tin, that's the price that they are. With my discount code, that is what you would get them for. The watercolour set, again, zip, tin, that's the offer price at the moment with my discount code, it's this. And with the metallic set, again, the zip case and the tin, that's the sale price and that is with my additional discount took off. Now with the multimedia set, which is this one, it's currently on sale for 80 99 So with my discount, you would get it for this price. If you were to buy all three of these sets, which you have pencils of within here, in the tin, you'd be looking to spend that across all three pencil ranges. And in the zip case, you'd be looking to spend that much across all three. So actually, you get a sample of all three in this multimedia set plus extras for that price with my code. So their sales currently still on Dominique at the moment. Um, you know, that again, these codes, I'm afraid, I'm really sorry those of you that are sort of outside of the um, US, the UK and Germany, my code only works in those places at the moment, but my contact has, at Castle has said to me that they are looking at increasing their reach, basically. They're looking into it at the moment and the sale is still on. So if you're in the market for more of these pencils, grab yourselves a bargain with my code. So I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys now. Um, this will all be uploaded onto YouTube this evening, so you'll be able to watch it the right way around because I know that you're on the side at the moment. All of the links, discounts, all the rest of it will all be within the description. Those of you that um, want to do a little bit more colouring with me, I'll be live again on the Johanna Basford Your Pages group. Oh, there's Melissa and I'm just finishing. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's good to see you though. 
So I will be in that group on Sunday at 4 p.m. UK time. And we're going to be covering um, a page with Derwent ink tents and a lot of colour theory and how I choose all of my colours and things as well. So I'll give you a sneaky look. I'll have to do it carefully because I think I've still got wet gel pen on this. So I'll give you a very cheeky sneaky look. Here we go. So this is the page that we'll be working on. So I've already done some work on, um, oh, right back at you, sis, good to see you. This is what the colour palette I've been working on. So what I'm going to talk you through is how I've come up with these palettes and how I'm then going to get uh, colour palettes that are going to go nicely with the fish and the buildings as well. So I know there's usually quite a lot of demand to get through pages quite efficiently. What I would say with this one is stick with me because we're going to be talking about lots more than just getting colour on paper how I choose my colours, um, colour theory, using the colour wheel, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, stick with me for that one because that one will probably take us two or three weekends to get through. So yeah, I'll hopefully see you Sunday. If you're not a member of that group, if you head up to my bio, the link to join is in my bio. So we're always looking for lovely new members to join us, so please do. And other than that, enjoy your weekend and I'll see you in a couple of days. So I'm going to take it out of my phone stand. Oh, there we go. She says, attached to everything. There we go. And it's by from me. Take care, folks.